Last week we installed two new port lights on the boat. We went on a muddy hike in the jungle. Installed a serious drogue and experienced the floating lantern ceremony on Memorial Day in Honolulu. Our departure to Alaska is closing in and we check the weather several times a day to see how it develops and to determine a day to set sail. So far there have been strong gales and even storms that are coming in from the west. The Pacific High hasn't been very stable and while waiting for the weather to improve we continue to prepare the boat. The batteries needed to be refilled with distilled water. We also sealed a couple of leaks in the deck. Okay, it's good. Okay. Yep. Finally, we have found the leak and it's now sealed. Huh. Those small things makes such a big difference on a boat. Today we're gonna install our new diesel heater. This is it, or this whole package here. And this we ordered from Amazon. It was pretty cheap for being a diesel heater on five kilowatts. It was $350. So of course we hope the quality will be good tip top and I will last for a long time but we're not sure so um, we're gonna install it in the same place as where we had the old diesel heater which is in the far aft on the starboard side so this is the bracket we got with the heater it doesn't really work the way it's going to sit now so I'll need to do a new bracket uh, but it looks like this See these two pipes, this is the inlet for the diesel, uh, this is exhaust, this is for um, air. So I will make a new bracket out of this aluminium plate. This will uh, sit screwed up into the roof. I will make a band on the plate like this. and. Uh, I will put this pattern on the aluminium plate here. So when I have bent this plate like this, the heater will sit on top of that and hanging from the roof. So the bracket is done, it's kind of crude but it will do the job. So it will hang from the roof like this. Just got a mail delivery to the boat. So so luxurious. It's like the first time now when we're here that we can finally order stuff online and get them shipped or get them sent to us easily. Because before, like in um, yeah, the Caribbean was hard, really difficult, expensive, and some countries in Central America and South America, you needed to 
do everything through an agent. Yeah, even in the ABC Islands because of customs and stuff like that. But here, you know, Amazon is our best friend and we can just click and order and it gets sent to us and then just a couple of days later and there's no extra charge for sending it here to Hawaii. So this with the rain jacket on top I think will be fine for when we're out at sea and for the sail up there now. And then we can have this when we're out, when we are sure. And what else did we order? Where is the other package? Out there? No, headlamp. I think it's Oh, headlamp. yeah. A new headlamp. Uh, we used, we had uh, exactly the same before, but we went, uh, we used it when we were snorkeling in the caves in Bonaire. And since then it has worked. Uh, but we did put it in like a Ziploc bag, but a new one. Insulation tape for the heater. That's the last thing we need to do on the heater. Then that's all done. High temperature flu tape. Okay. And then we ordered this guide, cruising guide over Kodiak Island, which be the first place that we come to. Uh, we're not going to be there for very long, but there wasn't any other guide and... Yeah, it's good to have. This was only five dollars. Good. Ah, the heater is finally installed. It's pretty hot in here at the moment. Been test testing the heater. It works pretty good, but of course it's hard to tell. It's already 30 degrees here in Hawaii. Uh, it's running good, and right now I think it's like 40 degrees in here in Celsius. So one mistake I did when I installed the exhaust pipe on this heater was that there's a joint between yeah, two exhaust pipes that I have. And I tried to seal it with uh, aluminium tape, but this 3M tape that I bought first it was obviously not very good for when it's hot because the glue on it couldn't take any heat at all so I had to remove that and I bought a special tape made for exhaust pipe so you can tape it and seal it and now it seems to be working perfect so everything is done except I'm going to put some insulation on the parts of this pipe that is running through the boat uh, when it's running in an area where there is no insulation otherwise we'll get condensation in those areas so I will use this to insulate those pipes a bit better so more of the heat that is coming from the heater is actually entering the saloon and the, yeah, the living spaces in here and not going against the hull and um, make it condensate so I hope this will work We got in contact with Amanda and John from 48 degrees north, as they were coming to Honolulu. They do sailing expeditions and teach sailing aboard their Halbar Rassi 46, called Mahina Tiare. They have sailed 213,000 miles during their 29 years of sailing together, and they have had 1,100 students on board. We went to meet them at their open boathouse. So a lot of our students have are planning to quit their job or sell their business and have a grand adventure. Yeah. And so they think maybe it would be wise before they sell everything to actually cross an ocean and see if they like it. About 40% of the time they decide that they don't like it. And about 60% of the time they say, right, this is it. This is what we need to know. Bedroom. Very nice. A big head with a shower. Swedish boats are nice. So we've been having a leak in 
this raw water pump from here. It's been dripping all the time. Every time we've been running the engine, it's been a pretty bad leak coming out from here. And I suspect it's this one that's leaking, so I will replace that now. I have uh, <coughs> ordered a kit, a uh, service kit for this pump. And it's, yeah, so far it looks pretty s straightforward to change this the parts and make it good again. I like how you are reusing your old uh, shorts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hugging the engine. Yeah. Yeah, and because this broke down when we crossed from Costa Rica, I had to plug it here because otherwise it was leaking all the time. And, uh, and because of that, we need to close the raw water intake every time we stop the engine. And that was the cause in Hilo, I forgot to close the raw water intake and uh, nearly flooded the whole engine because of that. So it will be good to have a new one now so we don't have to think about that every time we close the or turn off the engine to close the raw water intake also. What this uh, vacuum vent does is that it sits well above the water line. In this case like uh, I don't know 50, 60, 80 centimeters above the water line and it breaks the siphoning effect after you've been running the engine so you won't flood the engine. And it's a very important piece of equipment <laughs> because uh, if this doesn't work, it could be that you know when you're siphoning gasoline from a tank to a, or from a jerry can to a, a tank. If you try that, it's the same effect that can happen if you don't have this. Yeah, and the damages you can get on the engine from flooding it with salt water is uh, can be pretty severe. So you want to make sure that this this is working. It's important. So. Being such an important piece of this whole yeah, engine thing, uh, I think it's kind of weird that they make them this flimsy. I mean, I shouldn't say anything bad about this yet, but still, it's in plastic. The only thing that makes it work is this small rubber thing up here. I guess a better solution would be to just have a pipe or an extra hose from this part going somewhere there so you can see that you have a uh, coolant water running through uh, like a small um, yeah, hose running to the sink or something like that but in this case it would be kind of hard to yeah route that uh, extra hose to the sink but i know on other boats they have it like that they just have a pipe bent like this and a hose connected here going somewhere so you can always see okay when the engine is running you see, as long as there is water running out of that extra hose, you know that the engine is getting coolant water from outside. And also when you stop the engine, because it's open here, it, that will break the siphoning effect. So I think that's a better way to do it than to trust these uh, rubber things up here. Because in this case, it sits in here in a locker and we have this wall in front of it. So if it starts leaking, uh, we don't really know that until we open the engine compartment to see that there's salt water all over the place. So today is uh, running errands day. First up we go to Home Depot, it's like a hardware store kind of thing. Then I guess we're gonna visit Marine Store. I think we're gonna visit, uh, what else? Um, yeah. Fuel, jerry cans, and so some the propane food. tank. Propane. Yeah, gonna be a busy day. We got a couple of more jerry cans, so we can bring more diesel and gasoline aboard Ron.
last thing for the day was provisioning. Yuan says I'm sweaty. <laughs> Oh, it's so warm. We just came back from the store. <laughs> Yuan is tired. He doesn't have any patience left. <laughs> no, I haven't. And uh, yes, today we did our second grocery shopping, uh, which we think will be our last as well. Today we walked uh, and bought more of the fresh stuff. So some fresh produce, uh, some dairy and uh, yeah a couple of other things that we needed it was easier to to shop for this trip right yeah it's just uh, half of the distance and uh, yeah, yeah so half of the stuff yeah we still have a lot of stuff since costa rica yeah like we spaghetti do. and stuff like that and uh, <laughs> we actually still have things since the time we did our big grocery shopping at the canaries in the canaries <laughs> yeah. which was uh one and a half years ago, we still have canned tuna left. I think that's it. But yeah, we went quite overboard with that provisioning, but it lasted for a long time. So, so now we're gonna just uh, stow away everything, uh, upload a couple of videos that I'm there uploading at the moment, and uh, yeah. I just want to relax a little bit. It's been non-stop work for the last two weeks. So I'm pretty exhausted actually. So now I just want to reset and uh, yeah, prepare mentally for this next passage. Bought a new hard drive, external. Yeah, when you film as much as we do, you tend to use a lot of these. I think we have five or six of them now since we left Sweden. So. It's time for another one. And I also bought a new logbook. We couldn't find the fancy ones here, so this will do for the next trip. The other one is full. One thing that we have noticed since we came, yeah, since we came to the US is that it's uh, really hard to find uh, UHT milk. You know, like milk that you don't need to have in the fridge. And we asked around, and uh, at least here in Hawaii, it seems to be really hard to get by. So we bought some of this instead. Dry milk. Just mix it with uh, water. You use it for your oatmeal? Yeah, oatmeal. And, coffee. And in the coffee. And, you know, if you make, like, pancakes and stuff like that. Uh, but, yeah, I don't drink milk either anymore. I think we should go over to almond milk or something similar. Yeah, you're right. We've had such a wonderful time here in Hawaii and have really enjoyed all the places we visited. We love the relaxed atmosphere, the nature and the Hawaiian culture and we hope we can go back one day and visit the rest of the islands. Thank you for watching this episode. 
We really appreciate the thumbs up and please share and subscribe. Next week we set off on another ocean passage towards Alaska.